What's up everybody? Brett here. Very excited today to be bringing you a new offering for the channel. This time it's going to be Armello. A game that I've had my eye on for a long time, guys. This has been on my wish list since probably it came out back in 2015. I would not be surprised. It's a beautiful game. It's a very kind of cinematic game. And I waited. It's It recently went on sale with tons of DLC. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to pull the trigger. And go ahead and purchase it on Steam. It was about $30 including all the DLC. It's a game that has very positive reviews on its Steam page. Which is something I always look for. Because it tells you where the community's mind's at. If you're going to pick up uh, you know, sort of an indie title and take a chance on a new company. So let me go ahead and read to you guys what the description of this game is. And you know, maybe you'll get on board with it. Pun intended. Armello is a grim fairy tale board game come to life. With every match combining deep tactical card play, rich tabletop strategy, and RPG elements. Leverage, subterfuge, spells, and careful strategy to wrangle control of the game's chaotic odds as you quest for the throne. So, it's a beautiful game. I've never played it. I did a, a small amount of the tutorial just to kind of get a feel for the controls to see whether or not the game would kind of throw me to the wolves. Another pun intended. Or... They would, you know, very slowly introduce me to the game. And it seems like that is the case. Now, like I said, this game has tons of DLC. Um, it's kind of, you know, crazy to buy a game that you never played before and then buy all the DLC, most of which I may never even get to. But it, on the off chance that it added something to the early game or the story or, or what have you, I wanted to make sure that I had that out open to us. You can probably hear the music in the background. It's great. I'll probably be mentioning that several times if we as we go through this playthrough. There's a multiplayer aspect. I prefer, I prefer to play uh, board games kind of as a single player experience. So, you know, without too much further ado, guys, we are going to jump into the single player and a new game. Oh, you know what? I think we need to do... Let's see. Can I start over with the prologue? Yeah, let's watch. Okay, this is what I wanted. I wanted to make sure we could watch the trailer because it's beautiful. Uh, I wanted to watch the trailer and then go through the prologue together. Um, you can see I, I just stopped right here. Very early. So, debut trailer. Great heroes carry the journey's burdens, not on the shoulders, but in their hearts. All right, so that sort of gave us kind of a cool little introduction to the the characters, I believe, uh, and the, ultimately the bad guy, the Lion King, who has somehow become corrupted. And let's start by going on a wolf's hunt. In Thane's story, learn the basics of movement and combat. So we'll kind of do that together. Hopefully the audio is good. By all means, let me know if it's not. It sounded good to me. The kingdom of Armello is one of magic and wonder, yet a dark shadow creeps across this land. Our once mighty king has been touched by the malevolence of the rot, his tyranny and madness now threatening the realm he once united. Hero, by whatever means necessary, you must become king or queen of Armello. Though beware, the game of Armello is one of chance and treachery. No game shall be the same and often fate, and your opponents will be cruel to you. But remember, it is a daring hero who snatches victory from the jaws of defeat. Moon shine upon you, Thane. 
The elders grow restless. A dark scent taints the air. We suspect dark forces at work. We suspect the rot. A wolf clan knight awaits you by the gates of South Bank. He has reported evidence of rat clan activity. Perhaps they are behind the taint. We have sent a guide to lead you to the settlement. Though a talkative fellow, he's a seasoned explorer and will serve you well. May your blade strike true. Snowstrider, Greymane, Denmother. So our name is Thane, apparently. Hi, Thane. Did the Denmother tell you about me? Did she? I know she did. I see her letter. Let's go. Yay. Your first quest is at South Bank Journey here by traveling from tile to tile. South Bank is to the northwest. It's a lovely trip. This is going to be great. These are action points. AP, you have three per turn. Use them to move between tiles. Try to get to South Bank within two turns. No problem. Whoa, look at those mountains. I mean, I've seen bigger, but wow. They'll take ages to cross. Mountains cost 2 AP to enter, but provide a defensive bonus. Can we rest? My feet hurt. So you'll see here now it's the end of the turn. This is the end of the turn button. You can end your turn at any time. We need to be very concerned about what's on the board. Forest, mountains, I think these are swamps. This is your body, or your HP kind of. It represents your maximum health. If you lose all your health, you will die and be returned to your clan grounds. Move Thane towards South Bank by selecting an adjacent tile. Forest provides stealth at night. Stealth heroes cannot be seen. And there we go. Walking into a settlement brings it under your control. Each settlement you control provides one gold income at dawn. You'll see we have a day-night cycle. A robed figure bursts from South Bank's gates. They hold a bloody knife. A squire is in pursuit. Thane, stop him, she cries. Congratulations, you have reached your first quest. In quest, you choose between a dangerous option for a bonus reward or playing it safe. This is the safe option where we get a bonus 1 HP and a bonus uh, like renown, I think it's called. And this is the dangerous option where we may either lose HP or gain a squire. The quest dangerous option tests your body stat. So down here it'll tell me which of my stats it will roll against. It's telling me it'll give me one body from doing it. And one prestige. Okay, not renown. Prestige. As your fame spreads across the kingdom. Your chance to succeed is based on the stat being tested. Plus 10% chance for each stat point. If you succeed the dangerous test, you'll gain the bonus reward. The penalty of failure is minus 2 HP. Let's take the dangerous path and try for the squire. This is your chance of reward. This is your chance of failure. And it's a bit of a, like a roulette here. Click one of the quest tokens to find out whether you succeeded. I think this one's a bit rigged. Success! Your bonus reward is a follower. You'll also receive one body and one prestige. You step before the figure and block their clumsy strike. You grab their pack before they flee. A journal of scribbled notes tumbles out. Okay, another another little, like, hamster guy. If only you got here sooner. That beast attacked while we waited for you. You killed my master. Misery, tragedy. Whoa, how can I go on? Oh well, you looking for a squire? This guy could come in handy, thing. Alright, so slowly introducing all the mechanics. Click here to open your inventory shelf. Drag the squire into a party slot to recruit him. I have a new master. I'll follow you to the ends of the earth. Right after a nap. I need sleep. And my feet still hurt. Alright, let's go ahead and end that turn. <clears throat> We're going to get to combat soon enough. Turns in our mellow cycle from day to night. This is your gold. It is used to play item and trickery cards. You earn gold income from your clan and settlements every dawn. We've got plus two income. <clears throat> Choose a quest. Let's get going. You should read through the journals you recovered. The denizens of Armello will provide you with rumors. Often you'll be able to choose between several of them. 
This rumor will lead to a quest with a treasure, a poppet, as the reward. This is your fight. It represents your prowess in battle. This quest will test your fight. Alright, it wants us headed there. Sir, I gathered up some of my master's supplies. I'm sure he'd want you to have them. For a price. We should equip that sword and shield. They're sure to come in handy before we're done. You can also equip items and recruit followers by dragging them from your hand. The inventory shelf will open automatically. So boom, we bring that to the inventory. So plus one to our attack, I believe, and plus shielding. We'll get into that soon. Perfect, let's go. We're crossing a swamp today. Tough walk. We might pick up a scratch or two. Wants me to go there. Minus one HP, worth knowing. Swamps deal one minus one health upon entering. And then we reach our destination here. Stone circles are ancient sites imbued with wield power. They restore plus one health to those that enter. The circle is cluttered with symbols of dark power in the center, frantically picking up or frantically packing up is the robe figure. He spots you, then sprints for the trees as he circles the ledge or something the edge. Remember this is a safer option in a quest. Completing this quest will still increase your fight by plus one, and plus one prestige as word of your deed spread. This is the dangerous option which will test your fight. Your fight of five gives you a 50% chance of success. The reward is a treasure, the poppet, and the clue we seek. The cost of failure is minus one health. So, I'm pretty sure I did this last time and I failed. But I think for the purposes of doing this, I have to get this, whatever this poppet is. It's the object of my quest. But I'm, I'm almost positive that this part is rigged as well. If I get it though, I'll be kind of shocked. You go down onto all fours, racing across the circle. At the last moment, the figure spins and slashes you across the face. You howl, and he escapes. He got away and he took the poppet with him. I'll be honest, I'm glad we didn't find it. I don't want anything to do with the rot. Let's set up camp. We can start trying to track him down tomorrow. Alright, here we go. Now we're about to get introduced to the combat. We're near these palace guard characters. Thane of the Wolf Clan, hand over the poppet or be slain by order of the king. This is crazy, we don't even have the poppet. Why are the king's guard attacking? We've done nothing wrong, this is madness. Remember fight. Each point in it grants a die in battle. Dice and Armello have six unique symbols. A sword counts as one attack. A shield counts as one defense. Suns count as attacks during the day and misses at night. Vice versa with the moons. Wheels count as an attack, then explode, granting a bonus dice roll. Finally, a rot counts as a miss. So worst one, obviously, is the route... Oh, the rot, rather. And the best one seems to be the uh, the wield. These are your opponent's stats. They work the same way. <clears throat> so he gets two less dice than us. At the start of a battle, both combatants show their relevant items, followers, and abilities while the dice are locked in. The wolf clan's affinity is the knight. They get plus one dice when facing challenges at night. So now we're up to seven. A shining steel sword grants you one sword in battle. And the trusty shield grants one shield in battle, which will protect Thane from one enemy attack. And it does cost me gold to do this. And the King's Guard carry Hare's Halberds, which reduce their opponent's battle dice. Huh. In battle, plus one die. Okay, he gets an extra one and I lose one. So that makes us a heck of a lot more even. Very cool little, like, visual there. Oh, wow. We hit him pretty damn hard, I think. We blocked all of his damage, and then hit him. I don't know if we... Yeah, we only did one damage with all that. I don't know if we'll be able to play our items again. Huh. It's just telling me to roll my dice. Would be cool if I could play my... Okay, I don't even know what this is yet. So let's just roll them. 
I would not be surprised if this was all completely fixed. We got one rot. But we dealt one damage to both of them. And we lost two HP there. And we've been chased off into the woods. This isn't good. Did you see? We have a bounty now. The king's guard will hunt us down. We need to figure out a plan. Fast. Within our mellow, darkness stirs, for signs of rot have now returned. A hunted wolf forced to withdraw as rats slink in to find out more. Alright, and that's part one of the tutorial. Next part is a rat's tale. And Mercurial's story, learn to play cards and navigate the perils of our mellow. Let's do it. One of the things I love about this game... Uh, I don't know if you guys out there have ever read a lot of fantasy, but one of the first fantasy series I ever got into as a kid was the Redwall series. And that's making me love this game. Ooh, it's like someone's watching us. Interesting. We're like replaying our last turn. Meanwhile, Sneaky Rat. Hail Mercutio. Or Mercurio, rather. I'm, I was stuck in like Romeo Juliet mode. Our ears within the royal palace hear of a secret hear of secret plans. Thane seems to think much of his abilities. He hunts for tools of the rot. The king has laid a trap for him. A bounty will be placed on his head. A bounty which we expect you to claim. Teach him the consequences of meddling with the rot. Then find those tools for yourself. Nat Finnett, the spymaster, awaits you within South Bank. Her skills will be of use to you. Good luck. Keep your blade sharp and your tongue sharper. Remember, destroy this letter. I was about to say, I don't know if I was a spy master if I would use my entire full name. Let's go. Time is money, Mercurio. Our little fox buddy. Remember, to equip useful items, they will help you on your journey. So, let's see. This is an equipable. Disguise is a trickery card. These cards contain political plays, agents, traps, ruses, and more. Grant stealth until end of next turn. It costs three. Play disguise on yourself to stay hidden. Very expensive. You heard Festine. Let's go and find that spy master. So this is our mission now. This is your wits. Ah, another stat. It determines how many cards you can hold in your hand. This is a wit's quest. Let's go ahead and take it. Okay. I'm assuming now we can just kind of travel freely. We have three AP. Um, let's see. Force Kingsguard off the tile. That's interesting. Grant Scout from Tile until end of next turn. I don't know what Scout does. Minus two gold to target. Can't pay. Wow. Okay. Let's come here. Wait. I don't want to stop and rest without knowing where Thane is lurking. Here. Use this gold to hire rangers. Scout around Duncastle. That's where he was last seen. Okay. So we have our rangers. Grant Scout from tile until end of next turn. And it can see in an AoE around it. There, Thane's hiding in the woods. Don't worry. Come sunrise, the king's guard will find him. The eagle flag indicates scouted tiles. Scouting reveals stealth creatures. So I'm starting to see how all these different characters will probably have really different play styles. Death to the traitor. Maybe this guy's way more combat focused. Less focused on manipulating the board. Okay, it's going to let us play our other card, False Orders. The settlement of South Bank is in lockdown by order of the king. We're looking for accomplices. Thane's going to D up on the mountain. Thane has played a trickery card to this settlement as a peril. Thane has played a trickery card to the settlement as a peril. Interesting. A peril. Okay, a peril. I was about to say, I don't know what a peril is. A peril is a trap. 
Enter the tile and you'll face its challenge. Fail and you'll trigger the card's effect. A peril in Spruceville? What is Thane up to? Tricky nonsense, that's what. No matter. Forget the peril. Thane is exposed. Let's claim that bounty. This is your prestige. It reflects your renown in the realm. We'll gain prestige in the kingdom by claiming the bounty on Thane's head. I know a few crooks who will be happy to do our dirty work. Killing another hero in Armello awards you plus one prestige. Claiming bounties awards you with bonus prestige and gold, based on how wanted they are. You can play cards to other creatures just like you play disguise to yourself. Okay. If target can't pay, minus one health and minus one action point. And that takes him out. He was on one HP. So done. That's gold in our pockets and prestige in your name. Now, let's deal with the Spy Master. We'll need to lift the lockdown. Don't attack the King's Guard. We'll end up with a bounty too. Instead, let's organize some false orders. That bounty got you some gold, which will let us contact some serious underworld figures. And there we go. Now we can come here and fulfill our quest. Rat Clan Jingle. The city is bustling. You enter the tavern and glance around. There are many faces, but none you've seen before. No spy master. So we could whistle a rat clan tune. Once again, pop, probably scripted. Although I'm sure in the real game it will not be. If it wasn't positive there, I don't know how the story would have progressed. You pick an obscure song, one you'd only know if you were listening for it. It takes just a few notes before the spy master sits next to you. Information comes at a cost, Mercurio. Recruitable. Okay. Recruit the Spy Master. She will give you the ability to see other heroes' quest locations. That's kind of cool. So that's where Thane's trying to go. Thane's heading to the mountains. Hmm. This could complicate things. Give me some time to speak to my contacts. Rest a while. What is this extra card? Plus two health. Can I not give this to myself? Probably shouldn't have done that. I guess that was a heal. Interesting. Okay. That's probably a bad idea. I thought I was add literally adding to my health, but that's definitely not the case. Thane's back at his clan grounds. He's still heading toward the Winterhorn Mountains. When a hero dies, their turn ends. They lose one prestige and return to their clan grounds. I'm inclined to interfere with his plans, but we can't affect him while he's moving. That's no problem. We simply act where we know he'll be. Hire some mercenaries to lie in wait in Fleetfoot Hills. That'll cut him off from the mountains. Okay. You can play cards even when it's not your turn. Play the mercenaries' peril to Fleetfoot Hills. So we're just kind of assuming he would go this way, but in a real game I imagine he could go either way, perhaps? Well done, that slowed him down. I've heard whispers. I know where we must go. Body challenge reward. In mountains, gain one gold and one shield. We get a miner. Here's a strategist card. You use it to help us get to Spruce Vale faster, giving us an extra action point in exchange for three gold. This is the card's effect. Cost three gold. This is the card's Armello symbol. Let's just give you a bit more gold so that you can play it. Yeah, I think I spent the gold I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> Use strategist on yourself to increase your AP. Very good. We can now reach Spruce Vale without needing to stop and rest. Go here, to here. The Witching Pits, it's a dungeon. Interesting. Remember, we'll have to face Thane's Peril when we enter Spruce Vale, but there's no other option. Alright, let's see how Perils work now. Burn cards or roll dice to match symbols. The Rat Clan's affinity is the Knight. They get plus one dice when facing challenges at night. So we get an Adventures Kit and Perils plus one die. 
We're up to eight dice. So he was gonna steal an equipped item. So did we fail? Yeah, we did. We needed to get one of we need to get one of all three symbols. Thane stole your adventurer's kit. I had my lunch in there. Claiming more than one settlement further increases your gold income and provides a gold discount to trickery cards. The city curfew is in effect at nightfall. The contact's house is across the street, but a king's guard is patrolling in front of it. So we can go for the sneak past him. See if we can get lucky and see or see if it's scripted, you know, whatever. We nailed it. You're a shadow in the moonlight. He doesn't see you sneak by close enough to touch. The contact, the miner, smiles and lets you in. So this is great. We'll want to fight in the mountains now if we can. We have information. Now we plan our next move. I wonder if you're maxed out on three characters. The king himself. Wow. How the hell? By the wield. That was a lightning strike spell. Why would the king attack the prince of the wolf clan? Quick, we need to report back. With the king acting so strange, we must tread very carefully. This game is very deep. Deeper than perhaps I thought. Next up, A Rabbit's Quest. In Amber's story, learn to cast spells and manipulate the kingdom's politics. I figured we'd do the whole tutorial today and then see how much interest there is from you guys in this game and maybe doing a single player. So traitors and spies abound. I have been lenient for far too long. This is how I am repaid by the very clans I united. You forced me to take drastic measures. By my name, take heed. Fugitives unleash. The kings release all the prisoners of the crown. New king's trickery perils appear across the realm. Okay. You can see all the stuff going on down here. Everyone's kind of joining the board. Lady Amber, we greet you, Farseeker, and wish you well on your travels. It's with a heavy heart that we bring dire news. The king has cast aside the council of the Rabbit Clan. We no longer have his ear, and the realm suffers for it. As a legend throughout Armello, we ask that you consolidate your prestige and regain the king's trust. We can still calm the situation before it escalates. Something tells me that is not true. I know you were keen to go treasure hunting, but it looks like those plans might need to go on hold. Love that that guy's a badger. But maybe we've got time to search a dungeon or two. It is your specialty. Okay. Your hero's power is shown on your hero shelf. So, we've got the shelf, the journal. You will explore a dungeon by moving onto it. Dungeons are full of dangers and rewards. We'll build influence by exploring and seeking out treasures and followers. Let's get going. Although I would like to maybe have a cup of wildwood tea. No, fine. This is your spirit. Uh, yet another stat. It measures how attuned you are to the magical energies in our mellow. This is a spirit quest. Increasing your spirit will allow you to cast more powerful spells and increase your spell range. A bard. A chance at treasure and probably danger as well. I might just stay outside if that's okay. I've heard that there's some strange old magic at work in there. Then again, you've got strange magic yourself. Okay. This is a spell card. Play the hero. Plus two spirit until the end of next turn. Sure. This is magic. Alright, and yet another resource. It is used to play spell cards and is refilled every dusk. So okay, it's not asking me for gold. It's asking me for magic. Your spirit determines how far you can play spell cards. You should focus your magic. It will help you in the quest ahead. 
Very good. Um, let's add these things to our inventory. Claim target settlement. That's kind of cool. Cannot play from clans grounds. All right. What I wanted to do was go back to the hero shelf because I didn't actually see what this was. Higher chance of finding rewards when exploring. That's our hero power. Our clan affinity is day. And hopefully the rest of this will make sense later. Head to the Broken Layer Dungeon. This is the Explorer Coin Toss. It represents the, chains, or the chance of finding particular rewards or dangers. Alright. As you search the dungeon, you're drawn towards a strange light. It's the Bard, floating asleep in a bubble of errant magic. Go for the dangerous option. We have a 60% chance this time to get the Bard. But once again, pretty sure it's rigged. A quick wave of the hand and the glow fades. The Bard falls hitting the ground with a loud thud. She wakes up quick. Recruitable Bard. Plus one prestige when you successfully escape a peril. And apparently there are perils all over the place. So this is going to be good. Uh, should we end our turn? We still had AP left. Boom. Give me some of that gold generation. And we've got extra spirit now. Each dusk your magic is balanced to match your spirit. Well, we have seven spirit, so we get seven magic. Ooh, and they're fighting each other now. Thane and uh, Mercurio. Mercurio has the highest prestige of any hero. This makes him the prestige leader. Clan rivalries have got. Oh, wait, that's going too fast. I know a few ways you could get your name out there again. Wolf Claw Rat Tooth, a Royal Shield, and battle suns and moons that miss count as defenses instead. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't like that. I couldn't read any of those uh, those messages. These are the three core decks of our mellow. You may draw cards from any deck. The items deck contains weapons, armor, tools, and consumables to aid you on your journey. The trickery deck, full of traps, ruses, and political maneuvers, is the perfect deck to slow and undermine your opponents. And the spell deck is your source of powerful spells, offensive and defensive, buffs and curses. Wits determines the number of cards you draw up to each turn, so we can draw up to four cards, good to know. We're going to draw from spells, I guess. We get haste, plus one action point for the next two turns in exchange for three magic. Let's get an item as well and battle plus one shield. Cool. Let's take another spell. And let, maybe let's take one trickery. Settlement produces plus one gold and plus one prestige each dawn until terrorized. Huh. Travel to your next quest. I wonder if I could do something like this. Is this worth it? Is this something the game like doesn't want me to do? But it should be producing more gold for me now. Where is my next quest? I don't even know. Ah, we've got to get over there. Okay. Um, I don't know if I should go into here. I should probably play that. And I should probably play that as well. Oh, I can't afford it. That's okay. I don't think I'll need it this turn anyway. Let's go into here and see if we can't survive this. Burn cards or roll dice. Play to settlement. Exile to nearest unoccupied mountain and turn ends immediately. Oh, that's really bad considering the spells I just played. Well, we're getting a hard lesson here if I don't pass this. So I get exiled to the mountain 
here, presumably. And I lose my entire turn. That's rough. The king calls Mercurio from the Rat Clan to his side. Await today's king's declaration. Curse it! Look, Mercurio has the king's ear. As prestige leader, he has a say in which laws the king enforces. We need more prestige than him to gain prestige lead and reaffirm the Rabbit Clan's position. Slaying other heroes, completing quests, and playing trickery cards are reliable ways to earn prestige. This is your current prestige. You need to get more than Mercurio to become the new prestige the leader. Shall know my rule. Oh, they're going to settle... They're going to terrorize settlements, which is something that I kind of, uh... Played into, but mine is still protected. Terrorized settlements lose their allegiance to any hero or clan and won't generate any income. Rescuing a terrorized settlement will restore peace and order, earning the hero one prestige. That's cool. I'm hoping there's no more trap in that place that we went to because we triggered it. Okay, it looks like maybe he. Oh, he did it. Whatever he was doing, he did it. I wonder if there's a way to kind of fast forward through their turns. Alright, let's go for multiple spells. After battles, plus one health per wound inflicted until end of next turn. Take another item, perhaps. Get an extra die. Minus one health and minus one action point. We can use that on... Oh, we can't afford it? Oh, it costs magic. I was thinking it cost... Go take that. I was thinking it cost gold, which is my mistake. I don't think I necessarily want to fight. Uh, this is trapped and this will hurt me. But I still think it's probably better to do this than to risk one of these terrible... Uh... Become prestige leader and be summoned to make the king's declaration. Oh, that's right, I need... Oh my gosh, I need two uh, action points to get to the top of that mountain. Losing... Maybe, I don't know. kind of feel like I did it to myself. Could I have gotten there this turn? I don't think so. There was no, there was no move I could have made that would have gotten me there. <clears throat> but we are refilling our magic. Our spirit's getting a bit low. Ooh, he went and took it from us. Sneaky. Let's go for a trickery card, perhaps? Pact. Packs are formed between the card player and the target. And last until either member dies, unless stated otherwise. Interesting. So, I could, like, use this, I guess, on... Like Thane? I doubt it would let me use something like this on like a NPC type character. No. I don't even know where Thane is. I wonder if there's a way to like zoom to characters that you have visibility of. Or if I'm just supposed to keep track of him. Wolfrat Clawtooth. The circle of battle has been drawn. The two champions are standing ready to attack. You shove through the crowd around them. Win from the Rabbit Clan. We get another Royal Shield. We can try. It's 40% chance, which is pretty terrible odds. And we did it, though. Cool. You leap into the ring, blade flashing out from its hidden sheath within your parasol. The duelists are easy to defeat. You win soundly. I don't have any room, but it's fine. So how do I become prestige leader is what I'm asking myself right now. Should I be trying to attack uh, Mercurio? Or looking for dungeons? Because that's kind of what we specialize in. To get prestige, I can also try and liberate this area. This is so sketchy. I hate I hate how we're like 
kind of pigeonholed into coming into here. Let's see. Steal two cards from the target's hand. I actually don't mind that so much. Give me a shield. Ah. Okay. That's alright. I don't mind. Let's go see if we can take this guy out and liberate this, this town. Our battle ability is very low, but we have a lot of items. Wow, we are not as strong as this character. It appears we won that, though. And that forces him off, and we're able to liberate this. And that's our turn. Alright, Amber, now that you're the prestige leader, you just need to hang on until next dawn. A new law. Why, yes. There are two laws the king has put forward for the prestige leader to select. Controlling the king's declaration is a powerful position to hold. The king's rotten choir sings, minus one body to all heroes, banes, and king's guard across the whole kingdom permanently. Or the king and the prestige leader gain plus one health for enacting a mutual blood pact. Now I'm going to go for the rotten choir, which kind of makes it easier for my enemies to win as well. This can't be the same wise king who united the clans and ruled peacefully for a generation. I never thought I'd see this day. There's nothing worse than madness. Wield save us from the king. Alright. This game has so many mechanics. I'm going to be pretty shocked that there's even more that we're about to discover in the next part of the tutorial. And our last character here. A bear's pilgrimage. In Sana's story... Learn to defend against the rot and discover the different paths that lead to victory. Okay, so now we're going to learn about, like, win cons. Like any good, like, Civ-style game, there's it's always nice when there's more than one way to win. You don't just have to fight. A spirit stone has crystallized at Bear's Repose. It's just as I have foreseen. Guards, find every spirit stone. Go now. This king has played a peril to the stone circle. Watch him draw their cards. Thane's doing his thing. Mercurio's doing his thing. Ooh, they're fighting. Yeah, I feel like she loses in that exchange pretty, pretty heavily. Sister Sana, I will be brief. I'm sure you sense the darkness spreading. Old magic stirs. The power of the rot. The elders agree it has returned. This corruption must be purged before it manifests. If the banes are to rise again, all may be lost. Hilarious, Brother Superior. Sana, look at this guy. Ring-tailed lemur, is that what he is? I'm coming too, friend. Long time friend. I won't leave you now, friend. We are friends, right? I found the strange thing. It looks scary. What do you think it means? Hmm. Play to settlement swamp. Plus one rot. Poisoned until end of next turn. This is no ordinary spell card. This spell does not cost magic. Casting it will cause you to gain one rot. Ooh. Okay. So our rot counter. Our rot level is currently zero. Rot is a dark, powerful, and destructive force. It consumes living energy. When a hero gains their first point of rot, they are considered infected and will suffer minus one health every dawn. Ooh. That sounds bad, Sana. Let's avoid the rot. Unless there's a card that gets rid of our rot. Hey, so where are we going again? I forget. Deep within the pits. Deep within the pits of our mellow, dark forces stir. The elders have ordered you to intervene, lest an eldritch bane emerge. So plus one spirit, plus two magic every dawn. That seems pretty damn strong if we get the staff. Journey to Castle Bellerin. 
All right. Sounds good. We could go straight there. I'm curious if there's anything to going here first. Huh. So we can hurt people. Let's go ahead and equip this. The Oak Spear. Huh. Yeah, let's just go there. That's a Spear Stone, Sana. We should grab it, keep it safe, maybe play with it a bit. And to those that gather the stones almighty shall come the ultimate power, wild and purity. Wield and purity. That's what the old bear mumbled. His breath smelled of fish, so I didn't listen. Collect the spirit stone from bear's repose. Oh, do you feel that? Something bad is coming. Take this, it might help you. I had it tucked away just in case. It's a little grubby. Minus two health. Suns explode until end of next turn. Huh. A spirit stone, yes! Can I touch it? So we got it, whether or not something bad happens to us or what have you. We got a lot of extra rolls. As well as playing or equipping cards, you are able to burn cards in perils or battle. Each card has an Armello symbol that matches one of the symbols on your dice. Okay. Burning a card locks in one of your dice is that card's Armello symbol. Oh, nice. You burn cards by dragging and dropping them here. Got it. So burn the aflame card to match the symbol. So now all I need is a shield and a some swords. Okay, so it's giving us a timer. Let's hope we get lucky. And we did. Because that lightning strike looks pretty devastating. We have six health, but we have very low fighting skills. Let's go this way so we don't walk through the swamp. Do you see that? I don't like this. I'm scared. Okay. Let's uh, go into our hero shelf. So, when fighting a corrupted creature, use spirit in place of fight. Oh, nice. So, our spirit is five as opposed to two. So, we do quite well versus these, those types of enemies. Let's see. So, this is a way for me to check on like opponent's prestige. She's up to seven. Not that that probably really matters. For the purposes of the tutorial, anyway. And the kingdom Amber chooses... Lie. The king decrees that taxes are due. Everyone pays the king two gold. Can't pay minus one prestige. Wow. Definitely is powerful having the ability to issue those commands. Everybody's doing their quests. If we do a single player, I'm kind of con... I'm not sure who we're going to play as first. Let's go for... An item, perhaps? Ah, uh, that's right. I only... I thought I could draw two cards, but I wasn't paying attention to the amount of wits that I have. Uh, I might have still taken an item. Oh, can you not have duplicates? Oh no, I just can't afford it. Yeah, I definitely would have taken a trickery card had I thought that completely through. <clears throat> okay. Play to hero dungeon. Let's get a sword there. Get that there. Maybe a bit overkill. But I wasn't really using the cards anyway. And it still hit me. That's pretty unlucky. So I threw away all my cards and I still got tainted. Don't turn purple, please. Alright, feels bad, man. Pretty sure this was the point of this, though. I don't think we were ever going to win that. What is that thing? Unfortunately, I used one of my best like spells. Banes are corrupted creatures born of the rot. 
Any creature they kill, they infect with plus one rot. And we get five dice for this. Yep, that's what we've learned. Creatures with higher rot than their opponent will receive their opponent's rot as bonus dice. The Bane has more rot than you in this battle, so it will gain your rot in a bonus dice. Interesting mechanic. Alright, I get my spear. Remember, you can burn cards in battle to guarantee particular dice results. I mean, I don't want to guarantee a rot dice result, so... Because that means nothing. All right, that's a lot of attack. Hit us once. We hit it four times, though, and killed it. Down you go, and we get a prestige for that. It'd be cool if it, like, cleansed some rot from us. A Bane, what horror! I never believed in the old bedtime stories, but they're real. The dark of old. You're too late. The dungeon is filled with the shrieks of birthing banes. A cluster of them rise from dark ichor around a strange artifact. So we want to try and get the staff, I suppose. We got a 60% chance. Due to our max body. And we get it. By the time you grab the artifact, the banes have risen. Use it to cut your way through them and escape. It's cost zero. Well, I'm glad that's over. Let's get out of here. There we go. I'm trying to add it. That is not what I meant to do. I did not realize we had an extra... Uh, extra AP. I was just clicking on the board. Maybe there'll be a way for us to heal. Oh no, Mercurio. What has he done? A hero becomes corrupted when they have five or more rot. Corrupted heroes still lose one health every dawn. Corrupted heroes gain dark power such as plus one health each time they kill another creature in battle. In addition, any creature corrupted by the rot will take damage equal to their rot if they enter a sacred stone circle. So if you're rotted, you don't want to go into a stone circle, and you need to keep fighting in order to keep your HP high. Wow, he got smashed. There's got to be a way to get rid of rot. I think we should probably take that spirit stone to the castle. Banes had returned to Armello, but so had spirit stones. Sana hastened to the palace. Surely the king would know what to do. These ancient artifacts are one of the keys to Armello's survival. Any hero that possesses four of these mysterious artifacts will ascend to Spirit Walker, able to cleanse the king of his dark illness. Spirit stones can be found by exploring dungeons, or awarded in quests, and appear at stone circles from time to time. Let's go for a spell. That's cool. Let's get a trickery too. Just to see. We don't have a lot of gold though, sadly. Probably would have been better to, uh... Ooh, we've got three. Can I, can I get in through there? For some reason it looks like I can't walk here, but I can. I think I can. There we go. Let's go see the king. Lock the palace down. None shall enter. We must protect the kingdom. Sana, the palace seems different. The, the defenses are up. Doesn't the king know we have a spirit stone? The palace gardens are protected by powerful palace perils that remain until defeated. Breaching the palace is difficult. Collect a good mix of cards in your hand and burn cards to improve your chances of success. So unfortunately I only have two different types of cards, and neither of them, or actually only one of them is relevant here. And that's it. So wish me luck. I said I don't know if this is scripted and it'll just give it to me, but we have a lot of dice. I mean there was probably a good chance that we got it. 
and it would have forced us to retreat and hurt us if we didn't get it. The peril is dangerous, but the King's Guard's halberds are even more so. You try to explain yourself, they do not listen, hand it over. Um. Wow. I actually don't know what the right thing to do here is. Oh, that's not good. You hesitate then hand over the stone. They seize it. Behind you a rumbling voice chills your bones. Lock it in the dungeon. That's our spirit stone, not yours. The king and his guard aren't trying to stop the rot. They're leading us to disaster. We can't let you leave, sister. If you come to the dungeons willingly, your death will be quick. No, Sana, save me. I'm too hilarious to die. Okay, teleport. Nice. To the nearest dungeon, wherever that might be. And we have gained another spirit stone. So we've got two now. Thank the wheel. Just in time. I can't believe it. Our king has been taken by the rot. It's clear now that the king's days are numbered. But who's going to rule Armella? As the current prestige leader, Amber has been playing the political game. If the king's rot consumes his life while Amber is the prestige leader, she will achieve a prestige victory and claim the throne. Thane is heading towards a Kingslayer victory. He will need to breach the palace and attack the king directly. If Thane defeats the king in battle without dying, he'll be named King of Armello. And Mercurio is trying to get his rot higher than the king's. If he attacks the king with a higher rot value and slays him, Mercurio will become the new Lord of Corruption. To achieve a Spirit Stone victory, heroes first need to collect four Spirit Stones. With the stones, they must breach the palace and confront the king, cleansing the kingdom of rot. Let's return and talk with the fish breath bears. They'll know what to do. And I think that might be it for the playable tutorial, the prologue. There might be a cool cutscene for us after this. Achievement unlocked once upon a time. From great horrors, great heroes emerge. Oh, man. That was very cool. So, now we were... If we were to start a single player campaign, which we're not going to do today, uh, we have plenty of options. Stain, the Winter Wolf, and we'll go through them real quick just because this is kind of fun. Mercurio, the Grinning Blade, Sana, the Forest Sister, and Amber, the Far Seeker. Like I said, guys, I bought all the DLC, so I've got a lot of the new stuff, too. We've got River, the Howling Arrow, a Huntress, Zasha, the Whirlwind, Brun, Oathbreaker, or Oakbreaker, rather. Barnaby, screw loose. 
Awesome title. Magna the Unbroken. Sargon the Death Teller. Gore the Wieldkin. He looks nervous as hell. We got Alyssa War Wardress of Warrens. Fang the Exiled. Berserker character. Gruette Butcher Baroness. Yordana the Devourer. Hargrave Thunder Earl. Oh, he's got like a cannon on a spear. That's pretty sweet. Twist Little Light Paw. A squirrel pickpocket with an acorn sword. That's the cutest thing I've ever seen. Silas Fisher of Souls. Jesus. It's a good title. Horus the Iron Poet. This guy is awesome. He reminds me of like so many of the Redwall heroes. Scarlet the Bandit King. Volodar Worm Chanter. Like a Doom Bell. Agnia the Revenant. An intense looking character. A, these guys all look like bad guys. A flagellant. Oksana the Sentinel. And then Nazar Worm's Will. A little sneaky looking dude. Deceiver. So, this is all very awesome. I don't know who we'll start as, but let me know in the comment section who you'd like to see. I'm kind of leaning towards uh, Horus the Iron Poet. The Ninth Knight. Kingsguard will trade tiles with Horus. If he moves into their tile, unless he has a bounty. Oh, that's cool. They'll just kind of move out of his way. The Berserker guy looks pretty sweet. He starts with Rot, though. Wow. He gets like a first strike. An Architect. Interesting. She can fortify settlements. This is all very cool, and I'd like to look into it more later. But, uh... That's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed at least a look at the tutorial. And maybe based on that, you can make a decision for yourself whether or not you'd be interested in playing this game. It has a multiplayer mode, which I've heard is very fun from a friend of mine who plays this game. And, uh, yeah. I'm interested in more of a single-player experience, but depending on how many of you guys watch this and like it, uh, we'll definitely determine how, uh, how deep we go into it. But it's something, it's a change of pace. It's a cool game. It was on sale. And I figured I'd showcase it. So guys, without any further ado, I'm Brett. My channel is Good Talk Gaming. Hope you like and subscribe. If that's something you're interested in doing, I appreciate it. It helps out the channel. And as always, guys, I will see you in the next one. Take care, y'all.